A centaur or hippocentaur is a mythological creature with the upper body of a human and the lower body of a horse. In early Attic and Boeotian vase paintings, they are depicted with the hindquarters of a horse attached to them. In later renderings centaurs are given the torso of a human joined at the waist, to the horse's withers, where the horse's neck would be. This half-human and half-horse composition has led many writers to treat them as liminal beings, caught between the two natures, embodied in contrasted myths, both as the embodiment of untamed nature, as in their battle with the Lapiths, or conversely as teachers, like Chiron. The centaurs were usually said to have been born of Ixion and Nepholi. Another version, however, makes them children of a certain centaurus, who mated with the Magnesian mares. This centaurus was either himself a son of Ixion and Nepholi or of Apollo and still, daughter of the river god Peneus. In the later version of the story his twin brother was Lapiths, ancestor of the Lapiths, thus making the two warring peoples cousins. Centaurs were said to have inhabited the region of Magnesia and Mount Pelion in Thessaly, the Foloi Oak Forest in Elis, and the Melian Peninsula in southern Laconia. They continued to feature in literary forms of Roman mythology. A pair of them draw the chariot of Constantine the Great and his family in the great cameo of Constantine, which embodies holy pagan imagery. Centaurumachy the centaurs are best known for their fight with the Lapiths, which was caused by their attempt to carry off Hippodamia and the rest of the Lapith women on the day of Hippodamia's marriage to Pirithous, king of the Lapithi, himself the son of Ixion. The strife among these cousins is a metaphor for the conflict between the lower appetites and civilized behavior in humankind. Theseus, a hero and founder of cities, who happened to be present, threw the balance in favor of the right order of things, and assisted Pirate House. The centaurs were driven off or destroyed. Another Lapith hero, Caneus, who was invulnerable to weapons, was beaten into the earth by centaurs wielding rocks and the branches of trees. Centaurs are thought of in many Greek myths as wild as untamed horses. Like the Titan Omashi, the defeat of the Titans by the Olympian gods. The contests with the centaurs typify the struggle between civilization and barbarism. The centaur Omaki is most famously portrayed in the Parthenon Metopes by Phidias and in a Renaissance era sculpture by Michelangelo. Earliest representations the tentative identification of two fragmentary Mycenaean terracotta figures as centaurs, among the extensive Mycenaean pottery found at Ugarit, suggests a Bronze Age origin for these creatures of myth. A painted terracotta center was found in the hero's tomb at Lefkandi, and by the geometric period, centaurs figure among the first representational figures painted on Greek pottery. An often published geometric period bronze of a warrior face to face with a centaur is at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Theories of Origin The most common theory holds that the idea of centaurs came from the first reaction of a non riding culture, as in the Minoan Aegean world, to nomads who were mounted on horses. The theory suggests that such riders would appear as half man, half animal. Horse taming and horseback culture arose first in the southern steppe grasslands of Central Asia, perhaps approximately in modern Kazakhstan. The Lapith tribe of Thessaly, who were the kinsmen of the centaurs in myth, were described as the inventors of horseback riding by Greek writers. The Thessalian tribes also claimed their horse breeds were descended from the centaurs. Of the various classical Greek authors who mentioned centaurs, Pindar was the first who describes undoubtedly a combined monster. Previous authors tend to use words such as fears that could also mean ordinary savage men riding ordinary horses, though Homer does specifically refer to a centaur in the Odyssey contemporaneous representations of hybrid centaurs can be found in archaic Greek art. Lucretius in his 1st century BC philosophical poem on the nature of things denied the existence of centaurs based on their differing rate of growth. He states that at three years old horses are in the prime of their life while at three humans are still little more than babies.
making hybrid animals impossible. Robert Graves speculated that the centaurs were a dimly remembered pre-Hellenic fraternal earth cult who had their horse as a totem. A similar theory was incorporated into Mary Reno's The Bull from the Sea. Canaris, another half-man half-horse mythical creature from the Indian mythology, appeared in various ancient texts arts as well as sculptures from all around India. It is shown as a horse with the torso of a man in place of where the horse's head has to be, that is similar to a Greek centaur. The Greek word kentaurus is generally regarded as of obscure origin. The etymology from ken, taurus, piercing bull stickers, was a euhemorous suggestion in Pali a rationalizing text on Greek mythology, on incredible tales. Mounted archers from a village called Nepholi eliminating a herd of bulls that were the scourge of Ixion's kingdom. Another possible related etymology can be bull slayer. Some say that the Greeks took the constellation of Centaurus and also its name Piercing Bull from Mesopotamia, where it symbolized the god Baal who represents rain and fertility. Fighting with and piercing with his horns the demon Mo who represents the summer drought. In Greece, the constellation of Centaurus was noted by Eudoxus of Cnidus in the 4th century BC and by Aratus in the 3rd century. Female Centaurs Though female centaurs, called kentaurides, are not mentioned in early Greek literature and at, they do appear occasionally in later antiquity. A Macedonian mosaic of the 4th century BC is one of the earliest examples of the centaurus in art. Ovid also mentions a centauress named Hylanome who committed suicide when her husband Silurus was killed in the war with the Lapiths. In a description of a painting in Neapolish, the Greek rhetorician Philostratus the Elder describes them as sisters and wives of the male centaurs who live on Mount Pelion with their children. How beautiful the centaurides are, even where they are horses, for some grow out of white mares, others are attached to chestnut mares and the coats of others are dappled, but they glisten like those of horses that are well cared for. There is also a white female centaur that grows out of a black mare, and the very opposition of the colors helps to produce the united beauty of the whole. Female centaurs were referred to by Shakespeare in King Lear, Act 4, Scene V, Lane 124-125. Down from the waist the centaurs, though women all above, in the Disney animated film Fantasia, during the pastoral symphony, some of the main characters Characters are female centaurs, referred to as centaurettes by the Disney studio. Persistence in the medieval world. Centaurs preserved a Dionysian connection in the 12th century Romanesque carved capitals of Mozac Abbey in the Auvergne, where the capitals depict harvesters, boys riding goats, and griffins guarding the chalice that held the wine. Centaurs are shown on a number of Pictish carved stones from northeast Scotland, erected in the 8th-9th centuries AD. Though outside the limits of the Roman Empire, these depictions appear to be derived from classical prototypes. Jerome's version of the life of Saint Anthony the Great, the hermit monk of Egypt, written by Athanasius of Alexandria, was widely disseminated in the Middle Ages. It relates Anthony's encounter with the centaur, who challenged the saint but was forced to admit that the old gods had been overthrown. The episode was often depicted, notably, in the The Meeting of Saint Anthony Abbot and Saint Paul were hermit by Stefano di Giovanni called Sassiter, of two episodic depictions in a single panel of the hermit Antony's travel to greet the hermit Paul. One is his encounter along the pathway with the demonic figure of a centaur in a wood. A centaur-like half-human half-equine creature called Polkan appeared in Russian folk art and Lubok prints of the 17th-19th centuries. Polkan is originally based on Polakane, a half-dog from Andrea da Barbarino's poem I Realize I Francia, which was once popular in the Slavonic world in prosaic translations. Modern day the John C. Hodges Library at the University of Tennessee hosts a permanent exhibit of a centaur from Volos in its library. The exhibit, made by sculptor Bill Willers, 
by combining a study human skeleton with the skeleton of a Shetland pony is entitled, Do You Believe in Centaurs?, and was meant to mislead students, in order to make them more critically aware. According to the exhibitors, another exhibit by Willers is now on long-term display at the International Wildlife Museum in Tucson, Arizona. The full mount skeleton of a centaur, built by Skulls Unlimited International, is on display, along with several other fabled creatures, including the Cyclops, Unicorn and Griffin. A centaur is one of the symbols associated with both the Iota Phi Theta and the Delta Lambda Phi fraternities. Whereas, centaurs in Greek mythology were generally symbolic of chaos and unbridled passions, Delta Lambda Phi Centaur is modeled after Chiron and represents honor, moderation and tempered masculinity. Similarly, C.S. Lewis the popular The Chronicles of Narnia series depicts centaurs as the wisest and noblest of creatures. Lewis generally used the species to inspire awe in his readers. In J.K. Rowling's Harry Potter series, centaurs live in the forbidden forest close to Hogwarts, preferring to avoid contact with humans. Although different from those seen in Narnia, they live in societies called herds and are skilled at archery, healing and astrology. Although film depictions include very animalistic facial features, the reaction of the Hogwarts girls to Firenze suggests a more classical appearance. With the exception of Chiron, the centaurs in Rick Riordan's Percy Jackson and the Olympians are seen as party-goers who use a lot of American slang. Chiron is more like the classical centaurs, being trainer of the heroes and skilled in archery. In Riordan's subsequent series, Heroes of Olympus, another group of centaurs are depicted with more animalistic features and appear as villains, serving the Gigantus. Philip Jose Farmer's World of Tears series includes centaurs, called half-horses or hoi kentoroi. His creations address several of the metabolic problems of such creatures. How could the human mouth and nose intake sufficient air to sustain both itself and the horse body in? Similarly, how could the human ingest sufficient food to sustain both parts? Brandon Mull's Fable Haven series features centaurs that live in an area called Grunhold. The centaurs are portrayed as a proud, elitist group of beings that consider themselves superior to all other creatures. The fourth book also has a variation on the species called an Alcita, which is part man, part moose. Centaur appears in the novel by John Updike. The author depicts a rural Pennsylvanian town as seen through the optics of the myth of Centaur, an unknown and marginalized local schoolteacher, just like the mythological Chiron did for Prometheus, gave up his life for the future of his son who had chosen to be an independent artist in New York. Gallery Dias Foss Painter White Ground Lekathos Botticelli Palace and Centaur Antonio Carnova Theseus defeats the centaur. Prince Bova fights Polkan, Rush and Luboke, a bronze statue of a centaur, after the Furia T centaurs.